Okay, students. So this is uh, DCHM two three one, which is the course four of group human physiology, and uh, this is lecture six, and the topic is uh, regulation of uh, thyroid gland hormones. And I am Dr. Musadik Rahim, assistant professor, Department of Chemistry. Kohart University of Science and Technology and you can access these lectures through the web portal which is developed by the IT staff of the Kohart University which is www.ms.kohart.edu.pk and if you subscribe to this web portal so you will be able to get notifications for all the lectures which are being uploaded regarding your courses so the topics which we will, we will be discussing in this lecture will include the t4 t3 conversion sites that where the conversion is taking place between these two hormones of the thyroid gland the thyroid stimulating hormone which is also known as TSH and uh, this is the hormone which is stimulating the thyroid gland to in turn secrete the T4 and T3 hormones the TSH cyclic AMP where AMP stands for adenosine monophosphate so the functions of this TSH cyclic AMP thyroid releasing hormone which is also known as TRH and uh, this thyroid releasing hormone is responsible for the regulation of thyroid gland to secrete its hormones and then the thyroid disorders so either if the hypersecretion of thyroid gland hormones is taking place so what are the symptoms and what are the diseases and complications which are taking place as well as if there is under secretion of thyroid hormones so then what are the symptoms and diseases and complications which are occurring in the humans.
words TSH CAMP which stands for thyroid stimulating hormone along with cyclic AMP that is adenosine monophosphate so this thyroid stimulating hormone cyclic adenosine monophosphate is the prime regulator for the iodine uptake as well as the concentration of iodine within the thyroid gland now this TSH CAMP is also responsible for the formation of thyroid hormones and it also induces the expression and activation of three necessary genes now those genes encode for proteins which are responsible for the uptaking of iodide as well as the biosynthesis of the thyroid hormones and these three genes are sodium iodide symporter this is the gene encoding protein another one is thyroglobulin which is also abbreviated as TG and the last one is thyroperoxidate which is also abbreviated as TPO so the protein which are responsible for the synthesis of the hormones as well as for the uptake of iodide are these three proteins now these three proteins are being induced by the TSH cyclic AMP and as a result of induced stimulation there is more iodide uptake as well as more thyroid hormone formation taking place within the thyroid gland so that is the basic function of the TSH cyclic AMP now moving towards the thyroid releasing hormone so now the thyroid releasing hormone is secreted by the hypothalamic neurons from the hypothalamus and uh, this hormone is a tripeptide with the basic sequence of amino acids being glutamic acid histidine and proline so it means that uh, thyroid releasing hormone is composed of three amino acids and it is totally proteinic in nature now this hormone is being inhibited by high blood levels of thyroid hormones in the negative feedback loop which we will discussing in the coming diagram now this thyroid releasing hormone is the major positive regulator of thyroid stimulating hormone secretions so which means that it positively regulates the secretion of the thyroid stimulating hormone now if you look at the diagram so here you can see that the hypothalamus it is responsible for the secretion of thyroid releasing hormone now the thyroid releasing hormone has a positive effect or stimulate positively stimulating the TSH which is thyroid stimulating hormone and present in the pituitary gland and as a result of positive stimulation there is further positive stimulation by the thyroid stimulating hormone 
on the thyroid gland to secrete thyroid hormones. So this all is happening when there is less concentration of thyroid hormones present in the human body tissues. But when there is adequate amount of thyroid hormones being present in the human body tissues, then there is a negative feedback loop which is being originating and performed by the thyroid hormones that is T4 and T3. So what the T4 and T3 hormones are doing that they are sending negative feedback to the thyroid releasing hormone to stop further positive stimulation of the pituitary gland for the further release of thyroid stimulating hormone. So similarly the thyroid hormones they also have a negative feedback loop effect on the pituitary gland to stop the secretion of thyroid stimulating hormone so that it cannot further stimulate the thyroid gland for the synthesis and secretion of thyroid hormones. So this is the positive feedback when there is less concentration of thyroid hormones inside the human body tissues and this is the negative feedback loop which takes place when there is adequate or high concentration of thyroid hormones within the human body tissues and this all regulation is being taking place in the human body tissues the whole time and that's how the regulation of the thyroid hormones is being achieved with the help of thyroid releasing hormone as well as the thyroid stimulating hormone and as well as the thyroid gland for the secretion of thyroid hormones. Going towards the thyroid disorders. So first of all we will discuss the hyperthyroidism which results as a result of increased secretion of the thyroid hormones. So the most common form is the Graves disease which is also known as exo exo exothelmic whiter and uh, commonly referred as whiter which happens when there is a hypersecretion of thyroid hormones taking place. But the hyperthyroidism is less common than the hypothyroidism. So it means that the patients who are suffering from the low secretion or decreased secretion of the thyroid hormones is or more than the patients who are suffering from increased secretion or abnormal secretion of the thyroid hormones. Now the symptoms which can occur as a result of hyperthyroidism include nervousness that is not able to decide in a clear manner, insomnia that is the sleep, sleep, sleeplessness, high heart rate that is also known as the tachycardia, eye disease so infection in the eyes, anxiety or sometimes depression as well as the protrusion of the eyeballs. So these are all the symptoms and if they are happening in a person 
so it means that he might be suffering from hyperthyroidism which is taking place as a result of increased or abnormal secretion of the thyroid hormones so the thyroid disorders the other form of thyroid disorder is the hypothyroidism which means that when there is abnormal decreased secretion of the thyroid hormones now the examples of the hypothyroidism are iodine deficiency as well as the primary thyroid disease so the hypothyroidism can take place due to the iodine deficiency in the diet and also due to the thyroid disease that is the damaging or modification in the structure of the thyroid gland so the symptoms which occur as a result of decreased secretion of the thyroid hormones known as the hypothyroidism or lethargy that is kind of fatigue or thickness then you have fatigue that you haven't done a lot of work but still you feel very tired cold intolerance which means that if there is slight change in weather and the weather is a little cold then the patient or the person cannot bear or cope with that condition weakness so there is general weakness of the body hair loss so baldness is also a symptom of the hypothyroidism as well as the reproductive failure which means that uh, the person suffering from hypothyroidism has reproductive problems relating to sexual behavior so these are the references for further reading and uh, clearing the concept about the thyroid gland and the regulation of the thyroid gland by different uh, hormones so the linger the linger biochemistry is very good book for further reading as well as i will emphasize on the test book of medical physiology by gaitan and hall which is a very good book for further reading and uh, another one is the a fundamental and clinical text the thyroid by braverman so this book is also very good for further reading and uh, if you have any questions so you can write your questions in the comment section of the web portal which is being developed by the it staff of the guwahati university that is www.ms.gohar.edu.pk and i will be able to answer your queries and uh, confusions so that you can understand further about the thyroid gland thank you